welcome to my video. This is going to be my review and thoughts on 2009's New Moon, or the Twilight Saga New Moon. Too light. So, just to really quickly get out of the way, I am not back as such. This might be the only movie review I do for maybe a month or so. Still dealing with some physical pain. I did find a way to make this one work. And the reason I did that is because my friend and longtime supporter of the channel, Arts Cafe, who's been subscribed for, I guess by now, like six years or something. Seriously, thank you, dude. Uh, also a frequent commenter, he requested this and, you know, asked recently if I could try to do it before doing another, you know, movie in cinemas. And yeah, the next one's looking like it'll be about a month from now. This was the best that the, yeah, that I could work it out in this, you know, yeah, this one month period. Uh, yeah, hoping to be able to do... Agatha all along, but yeah. Um, I won't bore you with the details of how exactly I worked it out so that I would be able to do this. I think that is what I wanted to... Yes, so about the movie, I'm not going to try to like destroy it or something. There's plenty of people online, including here on YouTube, who have been very harsh on this movie in this series. I'm looking to, like, highlight the positives that I feel these movies have and the books. If you want something, you know, that dives deeper and or goes somewhat harder from a leftist perspective, there will be some links in the description box to that. I'm going to try not to restate anything they say there. And, uh, yes, as per usual, the review itself, since this is a sequel, I will be spoiling what came before it, but not this particular entry in the series, before I get into the thoughts. And I will verbally warn before I get into thoughts. So, yeah. Um, right, yes. One more thing. Columbo. I did listen through the book, so I, you know, some of what I say is going to apply to the book as well. If I don't specify and it sounds like it might, it probably does. Yeah, personally, I thought this was a slight improvement on the first, which I do still quite like. This does some of those things that we really love to see in sequels. You know, it's not trying... I, th I think some sequels can work when they're just trying to go in a completely different direction and just, you know, completely upend stuff. But this one does the thing where basically the conflict, you know, of this movie arises naturally from what was set up in the original and it kind of broadens out the world. The, the first one is you know, somewhat of like a peek through a keyhole, and this one starts to open the door. Uh, you know, you, you can very much tell, you know, from what I recall reading, Stephanie Meyer did not anticipate the first one being a huge hit. She just wanted to write something that she thought would be fun to write, you know. Apparently, originally, she wasn't even going to, like, publish it. It was just going to be a private little project. Uh, I forget, was it maybe brother or some some relative it was like you should publish this you tried big hit and it was like you know yeah that they decided they that she should make more and you can definitely see how the first one you know could, could very easily have stood entirely on its own and with this we start on this thing of like it's it's you know, it reminds me of other sequels to, to stories that they weren't sure if they were going to be able to do. Like, when you watch the first movie, there's a thing or two in there that you could tell, oh, this is set up for a, a sequel, and that maybe wasn't in the book. It was, the, you know. But, but yeah, this, you know, reminds me somewhat of Matrix Reloaded and Empire Strikes Back. You know, you can very clearly tell, okay, we're, we're doing this. The, this is... This is a series now, you know, this is no longer a one-off. And I've seen some 
frustrated that it does not finish off every story thread that it you know yeah i personally felt like it was there was enough here for it to to you know i mean obviously it wants you to go out and and watch the third one as well but it didn't feel like just like holding pattern kind of thing to me and like with the first this is a pretty good adaptation there's obviously some stuff that's lost uh, you know a, a big part of these at least the first two books i can imagine the the next two books as well a big part is bella's inner monologue and you can't really do that without having near constant narration and that just i don't know that that wouldn't have worked the, the movies would have been fairly different that simply was not the decision that they made. You know, they, they did manage to, to fit in some... There's this... You know, at, at times during this, Bella will write emails. And so we'll get the, you know, the words from the email narrated. Uh, but, but yeah, other than that, not an awful lot of voiceover. And yeah, you know, which does mean I, I just got to highlight... Um, if you haven't read the the book, which I do, you know, if you like the movie, I th I think you'd like the book. But if you haven't, um, Bella continues to refer to to her father, Mustache Dad, as Charlie rather than Dad most of the time, including in inner monologue, which continues to to tickle me. I remember being a teenager. Uh, yeah, one of the big things here is the. There's some stylistic changes, which I quite appreciate. You know, the, the first one, again, I think it works for that one. The, the first one has a bit of like a slight documentary feel. There's, there's some handheld, you know, camera, which works well for this thing of like putting you right there, which, you know, we are supposed to put ourselves in Bella's place. This one, with it making the world a bit bigger, it it works that it goes for a bit more of like a classic sort of, of way of, of filming and editing, you know. There's a more cinematic feel uh, this time around, and the... Yeah. Um, it's extremely clear that the people working on this, you know, they, they know you know, beyond knowing how filmmaking works, which is, you know, that's a good place to start. And again, not saying that the first one wasn't, but they also, they're able to use restraint, which is something you sometimes see, you know, I, I probably talk about Paul W. S. Anderson too much, but he knows how to point a camera, how to edit, but he does not have restraint. And yeah, here you do have, you know, quite a, a lot of restraint. It only goes for the really, like, grand and, and you know, yeah, that sort of stuff when it's called for, when the material makes sense for that. But, but yeah, you know, you've got some whip pans to show super speed. You've got, they, they make good use of dissolves and... There's certain takes where the camera will move, you know, in, in a way that where they don't have to cut and they can communicate something through a long take that you just can't with editing. And I, I love editing. I think it's one of the best parts of filmmaking, but there's just something about if you can hold a, a take. There's this fantastic motion control shot. Yeah, there's a few that, like, communicate time passing in, in a way that just it would not be the same if they insisted on cutting. Now, I think that pretty much covers that side of it so i think the 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 music is quite well chosen both uh, you know the, yeah the score is well composed the original uh, yeah the the licensed music works quite well 
and yeah, it just, it, you know, it really feels like just seeing the world through a teenager's eyes. And that might be about... I got a bunch more to say, but a lot of what I have to say is going to require spoilers. So let's see. I think that might be about... Yeah, uh, yeah, real quick, as a, as a adaptation, you know, the, the book, I, I listened to the, through the audio book, like, I think it's like 14 hours, you know, this movie is like, just under two hours, so obviously stuff had to be changed, you know, yeah, some stuff had to be trimmed, obviously some of it is just that the book has to use words to describe stuff where the movie can show it. You know, so something that might take a page or two to describe, you can show in, a, you know, yeah, not necessarily in seconds, but it can just be, like, there in the background as the, you know, in, in the book, we might get a detailed description of the walls and, and carpet and such, and then the movie, you know, you, you have the camera on it, so we, the viewer, can can perceive it without, so that that is, of course, part of it, but yeah, there's stuff that's trimmed down. I agree with almost every single change. Um, there's certain things where, like, a thing will happen in the book, but there'll be some talking back and forth first. And I think it works in the book. I don't think that the movie did need it, so I'm glad that they did trim that out. Yeah, I think that is all that I can get into without spoiling anything so yeah um i rate this seven you know world building fantasy romances out of 10 and let's get into the spoilers i'm just gonna real quick note there we go and there Yes. So, uh, yeah, not all of this is going to be in chronological order. I like that the, the this thing of, you know, basically the, the first one sets up the love story between Bella and Edward. And then in this one, he's gone for a lot of the movie and she's spending time with Jacob so, you know, the love triangle, which, you know, went implied in the first one. Uh, you know, Jacob has significantly more screen time in this one than he did in that one. Now it's it's coming to the, the forefront. And the... Yeah. Um, I, I quite like this thing of, like... It, Edward is almost like you know, in, to, to Bella <clears throat> and a significant chunk of the audience, he is perceived as far better than, than her, which of course makes it all the more special when he does love her back. Jacob, it feels more like just they're somewhat equals, especially before she realizes that he's a werewolf. And the... Yeah, you know, it's this thing of, like, they they played together as children, you know, she doesn't really think of him in, you know, yeah, those kinds of, of terms, which is, of course, you know, hard for, for him, because he does very much want a romantic relationship. And, um, yeah, I, I like the way that, the, you know, they have this thing of, like, Talking about, you know, their, I forget what exact word they use, but like, let's go with relative age, you know, because one of them knows something the other doesn't, so that makes them slightly more mature or older, and, you know, yeah, it's it's a fun thing to, to yeah, to, to share with another person. Um... Yeah, so I, I already mentioned the review, but I really love both the the shot of her, like, w when she's just sitting 
alone, you know, alone in her room and people, you know, outside people are playing, having fun, and she just can't join. And the camera goes all the way around, you know, for, for several months of, uh, you know, yeah, just fantastic. And yeah, I, I really appreciate when a piece of media can convey, you know, deep sadness and deep, you know, loss. You know, I've talked about media depicting grieving and, you know, this isn't grieving the death of a loved one, but it is grieving the loss of a relationship. You know, there's other kinds of, of grieving. And yeah, I thought they, they did a really great job. And I really appreciate that that um, Charlie continues to be, you know, he's sometimes he screws up, but he is trying, you know, the... Yeah, he he does want her to to be happy, to to do well, you know. And he suggests she go to Jacksonville, and she's very much against it. Which, I mean, fair enough. At this point in the timeline, Ash Williams is not there, so why would you even go? But yeah, the other major you know motion control shot of the bike fixing, love it. Um, you know. I wonder how many people took part of it too literally and wondered, is it part of Jacob's powers to turn a slice of pizza into a wrench or, but the, some kind of tool, whatever. But, but yeah, you know, really, really nicely done with, with that. Um, and yeah, uh, this element of Bella, like, you know, becoming an adrenaline junkie so that she can see Edward again, you know, it, it does clearly, you know, the, the, ah, what's the word? It does bring up that there, you know, the, the, the psychological effects of being deeply in love, of feeling that very intensely, you know, let's see, I want to, uh, I think it was that, Ah. See, my wrists are too bad to, for me to look it up right now, so I am sorry if I'm getting this wrong, but for my what I remember, it's been compared to schizophrenia, like the, the brain waves or something like that, of, of people deeply in love, and those who have schizophrenia are, are, you know, quite similar. It is similar, you know, chemical processes in, in the brain or something like that, you know. It's, yeah, I, I quite appreciate the, yeah, um, let's see, yeah, um, the, yeah, I'm gonna try to do some chronological stuff, so, yeah, um, at the, at the start of, of the movie, yeah, they, they do a good job of bringing, you know, in, in case you either didn't watch, you know, Back when this came out, I'm sure most of the people watching this movie had watched the first one. It came out like a year prior. But, you know, for those who might not, for those watching it years later, you know, I, I have watched the first one, but that was like months ago. But but yeah, um, book and movie alike bring you up to, to speed about, you know, the, the like one of the... Yeah, one of the first things in the book is, you know, no, Edward, you can't walk into the sunlight. My grandmother will see your skin sparkle and realize you're a vampire, you know. So, it's, yeah, in case you pick up that, that book without, you know, which, you know, the books, I'm pretty sure, do not say The Twilight Saga. They just have the, the titles, which I feel like is, a, is an indictment of, like, how highly Hollywood thinks of its audiences compared to, like, the, the book world, you know. It's like, with the book, yeah, this, you know... It's it's part of a series. You you gotta figure that out. But with a movie, they're like, ah, uh, let's let's we gotta we gotta add something. We don't want people to walk into this movie thinking, oh, yeah, we're gonna watch the moon shift for two hours. That'll be fun. You know, let, it, the the astrologist probably walked out like two minutes in if they did manage to to miss the Twilight Saga in in the opening title. Right, apparently the, the moon in the opening shot was one of the rare times where a moon actually did 
change in the in the right direction i want to say they i listened to the commentary track excellent listen by the way you know they they talked about that so they they had heard that the, you know um director and editor are, are on the commentary track and one of them had heard that apparently that was something that movies always got wrong so they made sure to, to get it right for for this one you know what now that i'm yeah adhd what are you gonna do medication did not make it better but real quick um i remembered reading the the imdb trivia apparently originally like or, or, yeah there was an idea to bring diego luna in to play arrow which having i i pretty sure i've only seen him as andor a cassian andor in in Rogue One and the the show and or the first season of Andor cannot wait for the second one. I would love to see him as just yeah that yeah um, and let's see there uh, yeah uh, apparently Taylor Lautner was not always going to play Jacob in in this one you know because the he's much you know he's he's swole since the the first one in in the book he's described as as having you know yeah grown a lot of muscle from what i recall and originally he was not he was going to be replaced by some other actor but there was like a, a petition a campaign and you know he he managed to put on all that muscle and yeah was was you know they they gave him back the the part and yeah i i really you know i Overall, I prefer his performance on Scream Queens, but that's a really difficult, you know, that's difficult to top. You know, that that show has a lot of my favorite performance by this actor. But yeah, um, the, let's see, I think that does cover that. So yes, um, back to the, yeah, so back to the beginning of the movie yeah um bella not wanting people to celebrate her birth what a mood and um yeah uh the the you know both book and movie bring up this thing of you know she's terrified of, of aging you know she's only turning 18 and it's already really bothering her and this actually this is a, a problem you know society puts way too much pressure on women to stay forever young also some on on men but you know not anywhere near as much you know there's there's misogynists who claim that when let's see i forget if it's is it 25 yeah i think i think it's 25 not 35 but at a certain age you know a woman just, just really deteriorates whereas a man only gets better and better it's just such a ridiculous thing to say a lot of the best things throughout history were done by women older than 25 or 35 or wherever they they decide to to put that line and a lot of the worst were done by men older than 35 and 25 but yeah the the i worry i sometimes come across as like self-hating you know i i am a man myself I'm not saying we're all terrible. I'm just saying sometimes we need to, you know, someone to just remind us we're not the center of the universe. You know, there's a lot of pop culture that just got to make sure if this is something I need to deal with immediately. It is not. It is not. And the, the yeah, there's a lot of pop culture that tries to, convince us that we're the center of the universe and i you know i'm not perfect uh, I, I know i appear to be but i fell for it for for years you know it took unlearning so that's why i'm trying to make sure others unlearn it but the the where was i the the yeah yeah you know the the this pressure on on young women uh, you know in in yeah, somewhat recently, I've I've heard that apparently there's 
teenagers, you know, in, in like, I think I've already forgotten what, I think they called it Sephora, you know, it's, I, I don't frequent it, I, I don't really think too much about my appearance, and that's, you know, in part because I am a, a guy, I, I just don't, you know, there, again, there's less societal pressure, um, but yeah, the, the, um, you know, yeah, teen girls, and then they'll, they'll, you know, get on social media, and they'll talk about using, you know, anti-aging, anti-wrinkle, and, you know, just, it's, it's a complex issue, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do it justice, I just wanted to bring up, you know, that, I, I'm fairly confident that it is something that has gotten worse in the 25 years, uh, 15 years, wow, in the 15 years since this movie first came out, so, in that way, it's it's quite relevant, you know, and it's kind of frustrating seeing. I, I remember seeing guys, you know, watching this and being like, oh, "Why why is she so obsessed with her appearance?" Well, patriarchy for one. Maybe you should try to empathize with her instead of getting mad at her for something that she, you know, she's she's you know reacting to patriarchy. And, uh, yeah, and patriarchy hurt men as well. So, you know, if you're a man and you're trying to uphold patriarchy, you're hurting yourself and the rest of us men as well. Just putting that out there. But the, um, yeah, and, and it's just, it's gorgeously shot and edited. This this opening of, you know, she's worried about her grandma realizing, and, and then she sees, no, it's it's me, I'm that old and he's he still looks 17 he's been 17 for a while you know and let's see the um, yeah um this thing of yeah and and charlie looking like is, is that a gray hair she's like N no and she's just, very funny dad yeah like it's that's a that is a a that's the kind of joke that that fathers will make, you know. The, I'm I'm not a I'm not a father myself, but I am an honorary dad because of my corny jokes. And the um, let's see, yeah, um, I like the bit where you know she goes to school and you know they're they're talking about Shakespeare, and then Edward shows up, and I think it's Mike who's like, well. I guess we're done talking to Bella, aren't we? Which, like, yeah, that's that's being being young and being in love. It's like, oh, huh, it's that's weird. I could have sworn there were other people right here, but now somehow I'm only seeing the one person that I'm super in love with. That's weird. And the, um, yeah, uh, really like the bit where they're watching Romeo and Juliet you know the the which is a a great play by the way and the you know i have to say it's been years but i remember quite liking the dicaprio version even though in real life he's it's kind of creepy how he i think was it was it 25 i, I forget exactly where his cap is but apparently he won't date a woman who's near his age and at this point it is like you could be this woman's father this is this is creepy um but but yeah i i would like to see the version they're they're watching in, in class but yeah you know we get another fun teacher and the first one you know is, i want to say biology teacher who's like oh, is this exciting come on guys this is amazing you know and here you have like the english teacher and he's like he's showing them this film and he's staying there he's mouthing the words along as watch it and and like you can see on his face like amazing you know just yeah um and the camera pans across several of the students you know and and the girls are like tearing up you know at the the sad you know and I'm 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 sorry. I do not remember the names. Uh, I swear it's not meant as as disrespect. But the you know one of one of the guys in the in the friend group is also crying, which is just it's so sweet. You know, love to see when a man is you know able to be in touch with his emotions, show emotions in front of other people. You know, just yeah, lo love to see it. 
And, you know, meanwhile, Mike is, like, practically falling asleep. Like, he looks so bored. He's got no luck with movies in this movie. Just, like, absolutely, really, yeah. Um, let's see. And, the um, yeah, um, Edward and Bella are, are talking. Everyone's a critic. Uh, Edward has some, has some issues with, with Romeo. But the, yeah, we get a little bit of, of setup for later in the movie of this thing of, you know, if he thought he lost Bella for good, then, you know, he would have to, to off himself. And he thought about, you know, he planned that when he thought James had killed Bella in the first movie. And uh, let's see, the... What was the other thing? The um, yeah, yeah, and and you know, the teacher takes a, a brief break from you know watching the screen intently and mouthing the words, and you know his his teacher sense was tingling, and he he you know spots that Edward clearly isn't paying attention, so you know pauses the movie. So, Mister Cullen. Would you like to, you know, it, would anyone like to, to repeat the, the last few lines just to show they were paying attention? Perhaps you, Mr. Cullen, would that be okay? You know, just... <laughs> I am the son of two teachers. I am 100% allowed to make fun of teachers. <laughs> you know, the rest of you, as soon as the bell rings and you get to go home... You, you know, you don't have to be around teachers. Tr trust me, they don't just do the whole correcting thing, like, when you're in class. They do it, like, 24-7. But, but yeah, you know, the, the, he's, he's convinced that, you know, he's, he's caught one of his students and he's going to be able to embarrass him in front of the other students by showing, you know, oh, you weren't paying attention to my class. And, you know, Edward can recite it, like, word for word, which in the... In the commentary track, they say it's like a, a photographic camera. I mean, memory. I kind of took it as he really does love that play. You know, whether he did before she did. I, ah, did they say that in the first? I, I forget. But you know, and and so yeah, he perfectly recites it, and the teacher is like, "Well, just pay attention, okay?" And and resumes the. You know, that was yeah. It's. It is, it is pretty funny when you're able to, you know, show a teacher, yeah, I, I was paying attention. I, I actually once, you know, I don't know, 20 years ago when I was in, in school and, and yeah, I, you know, we were, a, yeah, we were taking turns reading passages aloud and I read and spoke fast because that's, you know, that's, sometimes I speak fast. That's just, that's. Me, you know, and, and for some reason the teacher assumed that that must mean that I was just reading the words and not paying attention to them. So they were like, okay, uh, would you like to explain what you just read? And so I, you know, I, yeah, I explained it, you know, at, at normal speaking rate. And yeah, the teacher was like really annoyed. They, they were convinced, ah, I got him. He wasn't paying attention. It's just, yeah. If you're asking me to read something, I'm gonna pay attention. I, just, I, I honestly would. I, I was surprised that the teacher didn't realize that at that point. Like, there's other stuff that I struggle with, but yeah, love to read. Anyway, um, let's see the, yeah, and the the Cullens with the, <laughs> the birthday celebration. You know, Alice, the it, the the book each time Alice moves we get like a, a detailed description of oh you know she's just so graceful ultimately in the movie it's not constantly that but they do you know they give her this moment where she j jumps over you know which I appreciate it's it's this kind of you know it's it's cool without being like the kind of thing where it's like okay why does that not attract way more attention if she's doing it in the middle of a school like that you know 
and and yeah, yo, she gives Bella a present. And Bella's like, I, I said I didn't want a present, and she's like, but you're really gonna enjoy it. I you know I know because I can see the future. You know, which a, a great little thing because that's very important to know for this movie. You know, if, if you only realize, like, imagine if that line wasn't in there. Imagine if like when Alice shows up after you know Jacob fishes um, Bella out of the water, and Alice shows up. And she says, I saw you die. You know, people who forgot about the first movie or didn't watch it would be like, how did you do? What? What are you talking about? You know, but here it is right at the start. You know, and it's a line. You just, you notice it enough because it is, it is a kind of fun thing. You know, I, I know I, I know I agreed to not give you a present, but I saw the future and I know you're going to like it. You know, you, you remember that, you know. And the, let's see, the, the, Yeah. I, you know, Jasper tries to make Bella, you know, more excited about the 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 birthday party, and she's like, "Please don't mess with my my mood," you know. And he's like, "Sorry." And it's it's great because, like, ultimately we don't see him a huge amount in this movie, and you know, it is a pretty significant. He, he is the reason that the Cullens leave. You know, the the. So, yeah, seeing him so happy and, and trying to make her happy, you know, minutes before seeing him attack her, yeah, that, that makes it all the more tragic. You know, that, that's a pretty significant part of vampire stories of, of, you know, I guess probably since the very beginning, though exactly what the tragedy is has changed. But, yeah, there's a tragic aspect to, to vampires. You know, there, there aren't to, to all monsters in in fiction um there are to a lot of the undead but the the um, uh let's see yeah and you know at the end he he shows up again and you know he votes th that they turn her into a vampire and you know he's like you know it, it would be great to to not want to kill you all the time which i mean when you're right you're right but the, um, yeah, the, the birthday party, you know, it's, it's kind of funny that I want to say, ah, crap, I think her name is Rosalie, the, the, you know, one of the female vampire, one of the female Cullens still really doesn't like Bella, you know, in the first one there was the, the thing about the, the food, you know, where she, she breaks the, the bowl out of frustration, but, but yeah, you know, the, the, um, you know, she she just coldly hands the the camera back back to Bella. Uh, you know, I would say that Nikki Reed is is just frustrated that she's not working with the the ah uh, let's see was it Catherine Hardwick the director of the first one anymore? But she didn't like Bella in the first movie either. So, but the um, uh, let's see the um, yeah. Um, we get the the paper cut and you know some some blood drips on the carpet and you know it seems as though what clears the room is the lust for blood but i think they're just rushing off to debate who's going to have to try to clean that stain out of the carpet actually that's not accurate they told one of my jokes and that cleared the room like nothing but the um, uh, let's see. I, again, I'm afraid I, I forget the, the name, but I really like the, the older brother, Cullen, you know, at, at the end of the movie, he's like, yeah, you know, and, and here at the, the party, you know, he's, he's joking that it's cool that Edward is dating an older woman, <laughs> because technically Edward is still 17, and she just turned 18. Um... Yeah, I think that is about it for the party. Yeah, we, yeah, we get some some details about the Volturi, which I, I really appreciate set, giving them this much setup. Uh, you know, I I think it works. You know, in in the book, we don't, from what I recall, we don't know quite what they look like at the start. That's only you know near the end. Works well for the book. Here in the movie, I really appreciate that we see it, you know, up front. You know, there's the 
one vampire who, you know, they, they execute. He, he used to be a member of the vampire species, and then he was dismembered. And the, um, let's see, right, I really appreciate because the book opens with, like, a prologue that describes Bella running through Vol... Vol Voltari, I think it was called, you know, to, to get to, to Edward. We don't know at that point in book or movie that she's running towards Edward. They show it in the movie and then it leads into the dream she had, which, you know, that's not quite how it is in the in the book. It's basically just, you know, she took a really exciting chunk from late in the book and put it at the start. That's, you know, lots of books do that. Some movies and TV shows do as well, but... Yeah, I, I really appreciate making it just part of the the dream. You know, it leads the yeah the prologue the book prologue leads directly into the dream of of aging. And uh, let's see, that brings us to the yeah, and it is just it's it's really cool. You know, in in the first one. The, you know, we meet basically. There's there's one family of vampires, and then we meet the the three from the other group, and then here we're told, oh, there's like, you know, there's vampire authorities. You know, they they have this this city that they have a lot of of power. In. You know, just yeah, that is a really cool idea, and I think that brings us nicely to the the breakup which really is just yeah heartbreaking just you know you you really you we really want to see these two happy together and let's see the the um, yeah and and the um, you know he he disappears and in part it's it's super speed but it does also you know, cinematically, it does feel like, you know, he just, he, he disappeared as, as a, just, yeah, very, very nicely done there. And, yeah, you know, she ends up staying out there in the, in the woods for, for a really long time. We get a very cool glimpse of werewolf in, in the dark. And we get the first of a number of shirtless, chiseled young men in this movie, which, honestly... Like, there's so much eye candy in male-oriented teen movies, so I really don't see why the female-oriented one can't also have a, a bunch. And, you know, obviously, like, the in-universe explanation is they don't want to have to change shirts every single time they turn. And, you know, when you become a werewolf, you can manifest shorts when you turn back into a human. Honestly, like... Fair enough. It's, you know, I, I don't think it would be, like, a problem for the, you know, if, if they did actually have to run around naked after turning into a wolf or, or try to find something to cover up with or something. But Americans are ridiculously, like, terrified of, of nudity. You know, I guess female werewolves, you know... Yeah, run around in, in like a, a bikini top in, instead of bare chested so that the female presenting nipple will not offend conservatives. They'll, they'll clutch their pearls so hard they, you know, emulsify. Um, let's see. The, the, yeah. I think that the. Yeah, I uh, right. I appreciate that there's still this sort of spy thing and mystery thing of like you know we already know about vampires, so now we're learning about werewolves. Did I almost say vampire the way that Nicolas Cage said? See, I haven't watched. Now I don't even remember what it's called, but there was a recent movie. I I might watch it at some point. I do. I'm I'm happy for Nicolas Cage. He finally became a vampire. I would like to watch the original as as well. I've only seen clips, but it does look like Cage at some of his most mega, and the which is some of the most fun Cage. Cage uncaged, but the 
uh, let's see, well, what, where was I? The, the, it, yeah, she gets, you know, carried back, and then we get, you know, her, like, completely devastated emotionally. And according to the commentary track, the, the director didn't tell Kristen Bell to death. Yeah. Stuart, holy crap. Her, na her, her character's name is Bella. That's why I, 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 I can tell the actresses apart. I'm, I'm a fan of both. Um, but, but yeah, you know, he didn't tell her exactly that that's how she should scream. That was her choice. And yeah, you know, it is like this horrifying thing, you know. And I think... Yeah, and, and, you know, after a while, you know, Charlie says, this. I, we can't go on like this, you know, and, and, you know, mentions, you know, you never see your friends, and then she says, ah, I have, an, I actually am going with Jessica tonight, you know, and then she gets in the, in the car, and, you know, calls, it's Bella, Bella Swan, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, that's, you know, it's been months with with like zero contact and and then just a call from out of the blue that yeah and the let's see I th yeah yeah they go to see like a, a zombie movie i was when i listened through the book i felt pretty confident that they weren't actually going to show it in the movie because the the book does describe some of it. It's it's that thing of like YA. Apparently, it's fine for the books to describe violence, but the movies can't show it. Like this, this was a problem in the Hunger Games movies as well. You know, the 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 books tell us what's happening, and then the movies really try to avoid showing it or show this very watered down PG thirteen version. And I think. That does, yeah, um, but, but yeah, you know, walking out of it, apparently, um, I can't believe I'm blanking on her name, I like her quite a bit as well, but the, the girl playing Jessica, um, you know, she's, she's great in both these two and also End of Watch, you know, just, yeah, I, I, I can't even... I can't not smile just thinking about the part where her and Jake Gyllenhaal are like, you know, singing and rapping along to the, the radio in the car. It's just, they're so adorable together. Just, yeah. You know, and, and there's, you know, there's a part of that movie where she's like the one talking to the camera for, I don't know, two or three minutes in a row and she just nails it. You know, that's not easy to do. That is an acquired skill and I speak from experience but the apparently she ad-libbed the a lot of the dialogue during the you know the bit where they're leaving the the movie theater and the the director said that she gave them a lot to work with she in in different takes she would say different things which very cool so I have to wonder if if it's the actress it's probably supposed to be the character who like you know, she says zombies shouldn't be a metaphor for consumerism. Like, George A. Romero is turning over in his grave. But hopefully just because his, you know, it was getting awkward to stay in the same position. He had a sense of humor about himself. You know, he, he was, like, I've seen this, like, documentary where, like, it's these, like, film school students who are like oh, you know the the ah crap what was it called it, it it was like it was the name of the character I'm, I'm afraid i forget what it's it's called but early george romero movie and it's like of is he a vampire sort of thing and you know these like students are like oh, it's the best movie ever you know and and he's like uh let's 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 calm down it's i you know i, I think i did okay on it you know so and the um, let's see yeah, and, and Jessica, this thing of, like, yeah, the the um, the um way too casual response to, to someone who's, like, clearly really, really depressed. And she's like, I've got my own problems, you know? It's just, yeah, wow. Um, let's see. And the, yeah, 
you know, Bella goes to the, the, you know, at first she thinks that this is one of the guys from the first movie that Edward saved her from, you know, even when she realizes it's not, she still goes, you know, she gets a ride from, okay, I'm going to have to deal with that later. There we go. Uh, yeah. And, and in the book, she actually doesn't go for a ride. And again, I think it works for the book. The movie needed something a little bit more visual and visceral. Uh, right, I guess this is a perfectly fine time to, to confront. Some people, like, say, why is Edward popping up in her head to, to tell her not to do dangerous things? It just makes those things more dangerous. I will grant that the movie doesn't make this completely clear. It, it was clear in the in the book. Uh, you know, they they had to trim some stuff away. That's not him doing that. That's her, like, imagining him there, you know. He, he doesn't have access to her mind. The, the you know, as, as we find out in this movie, basically no vampire has access to her mind, which also, in the commentary track, they explain the reason that Jasper can manipulate her mood is that that's not her brain that's what did he say adrenal or so, so, some kind of n nervous system something like that you know it's not quite which you know what I'll, I'll that's yeah that is satisfactory that is that is nerdy enough for me to accept that as a valid explanation for that um but but the yeah you know it's it's her you know, imagining him, and yeah, sometimes her vision of him is, you know, yeah, keeps insisting for too long, and it ends up dangerous. That's a good metaphor for, like, in, in real life, if you are, like, having second thoughts while doing something, if you don't stop doing it immediately, but you just keep thinking, oh, what, what if I, you know, what if this, that, and the other thing... Yeah, you might actually end up hurting yourself worse than if you did just go go through with it, you know. And the let's see. Yeah, uh, I think they did a good job highlighting, you know, that the biker really doesn't care about her. You know, she she like gets behind him on the bike and he's like, "Did you say something?" You know what? Never mind, you know. Like he doesn't care about her emotional well-being. And let's see the I like that, you know, when when Bella returns to Jessica, Jessica's like, you know, I, I was going to end up, you know, FBI. It's, she's such a fun character. I'm really glad she's she's still around. I hope she's... I'm, I'm pretty sure she's in at least some of the, the next uh, three movies, you know. But, yeah, you know, she she says, oh, you're, you're an adrenaline junkie. Great. Why don't you just try bungee jumping? You know, you don't have to do something dangerous. Which is, you know, I mean... She does eventually try bungee jumping. She just forgets about the cord. And the... Um, let's see. What's the other thing? Um, yeah. You know, she talks to, to Jacob. And, you know, basically it does seemingly start as, you know, she wants to be able to, to yeah, ride a motorcycle so that she can, you know, see Edward again and you know but she does also develop feelings for Jacob just not quite to the level that he would would like um there's you know debate on whether she's terrible to him or not and I don't think I'm qualified to say more about it than that and uh let's see what's the other thing then there is the uh, right, um, yeah, when when she starts working on the, the bikes, you know, there's this bit with, okay, I think they were called Quill and Embry, and, you know, this thing of, like, you know, oh, we're, you know, we're just friends. Oh, you his girlfriend? No, we're just friends. Burn. I told you guys, she's a, a girl and a friend. Is that how you remember it? <laughs> you know, that was, yeah, that's... I'd like to think I've never done that, but I've definitely known, you know, when I was a teenage boy, I've definitely known some that, that did exactly that and did not like when it was revealed that that was not, yeah. Um, in the book, there's actually this thing of like, you know, 
she encounters Quill and Embry several times over the course of the story, and one of the last time, possibly the last time in the book where she encounters them, she she thinks to herself, "I still don't know which is which," you know, because they're always they're like connected at the the seams or, or whatever, you know, they're they're always together. In this one, you know, one of them just steps forward and says his full name, which I don't know exactly who thought of that change, but I know enough about Hollywood to say it was a good choice because if you want to be cast in something, if someone knows your face rather than just have, you know, seeing your, your resume of stuff they might not have seen or they might have seen, but they don't know which, which one are you, you know, there's the... the like in in um, when making the French Connection, you know that they, they accidentally got the wrong guy because they they yeah, um, and there was some some trouble with that because the guy also did not speak a word of English and the the English you know the the um, uh, yeah the English speakers struggled to communicate with him because he was uh, French or Italian or something you know and. There's actually, there's an interview, I want to say it was on Stephen Colbert. Steve Buscemi pointed out that he was so happy that in Reservoir Dogs, when all the characters come walking at the camera in slow motion, you actually, the name of the actor is, you know, superimposed on the, the yeah, the, the one-er, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, the one shot, whatever. The shot of the particular actor and he explained that's actually that's that's greatly increasing your chances of getting cast because now people know you know they, they're able to connect the the name with the face and that's a, yeah that can be a, a hurdle other otherwise i think more more movies should have either at the opening or at the ending just yeah have the actor you know, give give them like a, a close up or something, and they just have their their name under. You know, the there was a while where that was the you know, the, um, the first Blues Brothers does that. You know, the first Predator does that. You you could do that. You know, it. I, I know for some movies it would seem corny, but there's a lot of movies where it would work. Um, let's see the right. Um, in the in the book. Jacob doesn't teach Bella how to use the hand, or the, yeah, the handbrake, and, and that's part of why she crashes. You know, in, in the movie, it's basically like she just, she doesn't use it because of the, the Edward vision of it all. Yeah, I, I do think that it makes a lot of sense to have, you know, it, it feels weird to me for Jacob to not tell her, you know, I, I mean... Yeah, I, I don't really know what book Jacob was thinking there. Um, let's see. Right, I, I like the visualization. From what I recall in the book, it's just described as her hearing his voice. But, you know, yeah, movie, visual medium. So they, they yeah, they place Edward there. I, I thought that was a, a good adaptation decision. I also like the changes to the, the super speed. I was not the biggest fan of it in the, the first movie. You know, the the some of the time they do it with the whip pans, some of the time they do this thing where you sort of see them disappear and then reappear, and the effect is not unlike something like Nightcrawler, which you know, yeah, I I think because you know we gotta remember what's what's happening is that they're moving so fast, the the vampire's moving so fast that human eyes can't perceive it completely. Yeah, makes sense that it would look like they just disappear and reappear like that. Uh, I think that brings us to the the second journey to the theater, which, like, you know, Mike is adorable. I, I, you know, sometimes almost kind of, it's that thing of, like, I, I don't think that Bella owes him a relationship just because he wants one and is nice to her, uh, you know, and, uh, let's see, was there a thing about, like, he could have gone out with Jessica in the first one and chose not to because he's holding out for 
for Bella, and it's, you know, it's one of those things, like, I can appreciate, you know, if you don't feel that way about someone, you don't have to, yeah, I'm, I'm slightly torn on him, but he is adorable, and this thing, you know, so Bella's back, eating and talking, and, you know, maybe you want to go see a movie, you know, and he thinks that, oh, you know, she's, she's a girl, so she's gonna like a romantic comedy, and she's like, oh, I, I hate that stuff, let's watch an action movie, you know, that was, that was fun, which, yeah, um, I do love romantic comedies myself. I'm not gonna lie, I, you know, I don't, I think it would be difficult for me to have a long-term relationship with someone, and I've never tried, because I, I knew, you know, to have a long-term romantic relationship with someone who would never watch something like an action movie or something, just like, you know, I've had two long-term relationships, both of us watched, with, in both cases, I am popular today, holy crap. Um, huh, okay. Um, yeah, the, the, um, let's see. Wow, where were we? Yes, the, the, yeah. You know, so, so Bella watching action movies, which, you know, in the book, she, you know, it's, it's more, like, underlined. It's because she can't stand to watch ro romance right now because it just reminds her of Edward, you know. There's a couple of bits of that left in the movie, but they don't, directly connected to her movie going experiences but yeah um you know and and he's like mike is clearly trying to ask her out on a date and it's this yeah basically the the you know she's like oh so would would everybody like to go and you know i like that the the, the other guy is like oh yeah mike we were talking about watching that together and you know mike is like not under these exact circumstances, no. Uh, let's see, what was the other thing? The, um, yeah, and then when they do finally go, like, apparently, you know, like, it's so close to, you know, Mike getting to be alone in the movie theater. With, or, oh, yeah, not alone, but without the friend group. But then Jacob is still there, you know, and you have this thing of, like, Jacob... Just, like, I don't think he's trying to, to bother Mike, but it does end up having that effect, you know. Um, so, the movie's called Face Punch, and, like, we hear a little bit of it in the, you know, when they're, when they're sitting there, and, and there's this thing of, like, is Bella going to hold the hand of one of them or of the other? And the, you know, possibly both make the polyamorous viewers feel scene which would be nice it's, yeah not gonna happen in this movie i don't think um the the which is fine but the the um, ah let's see what was the other thing um yeah yeah the the you know the movie you know we hear a little bit of it as like okay so if i remember it's something like put that gun down or i'll blow your head off you put your gun down, or I'll blow your head off. Both of you put your guns down, or I'll blow your heads off. Screw it, let's fight. This sounds like the most ridiculous, loud, just abysmal action movie ever made, and I want to watch it right now. The, let's see. Um... Yeah, we get some more good moments between Bella and Jacob waiting for Mike to finish in the bathroom. And let's see. Yeah, in, in the book, they spend a while on this thing of Bella not being able to, to talk to, to Jacob. And I appreciate that in the movie, we just breeze past it because, you know, it, it works well for building up in, in the book. But there's so much the movie has to get to, you know, I, I didn't feel like it was rushed. Uh, according to the commentary track, uh, some of the native, uh, you know, the, apparently the, the actors playing Native Americans in this movie are all Native Americans. And they had to, to be able to document that in order to be cast. And the, um, uh, let's see. Yes, the, the. What was the, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the brief bit of the, the set where she goes in and sees Jacob in, on, on the bed. 
you know, that they apparently explained that, you know, it reminded them exactly of living on the, the reservation. Um, you know what, I'm just gonna real quick. There we go, that was one email that did need just a brief reply right away. So, the, what was the other thing? The, the, right, yeah, and, and we get the big reveal of the, the wolves when, you know, she goes to, to confront, because, yeah, you know, earlier we said, oh, it's like a cult, which I also appreciate, you know, yeah, them throwing that one kid off, yeah, it looks like violence, you know, and then, you know, Jacob explains, no, no, they're just playing, you know, it's, it's, rough horseplay kind of thing you know all of them are going to jump into the water from from the cliff uh, but but the yeah you know she she goes up to them and and you know says jacob didn't tell me anything he's scared of you and one of them like laughs and you know i think the idea is that he's like thinking jacob's scared of us don't be ridiculous but yeah bella perceives it as him laughing at the idea of her friend being afraid of you know because at this point she basically she thinks it's like a cult or a gang or something and yeah you know and reminding us that bella swan can be a badass under certain circumstances she slaps him in the face like holy crap that that is yeah um just gonna make sure uh, okay yeah um and and yeah you know he starts wolfing out and you know she runs towards jacob and you know as the commentary track points out you know you think there's gonna be a hug but unfortunately it was spoiled in all the trailers their words and and the yeah you know you get a little bit of of fighting pretty cool you know and the the uh, let's see. Yeah, some people disliked how long it took Bella to figure out that there are werewolves. I mean, I don't... I've never not known, you know, the, the moment that... Yeah, when I first heard that this movie existed, yeah, it was, you know, I saw the trailer. There's werewolves right there. So, you know, I, I really couldn't say. I, I can't quite imagine what it would be like. Um, yeah, you know, it took her a while to realize about vampires as well. And let's see, then we have the, um, oh, right, yeah, uh, very tense when she encounters, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. Um, I know it wasn't LaCroix, but, like, French people are not, like, an oppressed minority, so let's go with LaCroix you know, yeah, like, oh, wait, crap, given that he's black, I really shouldn't be making fun of his name, I'm sorry, I, I do not rem remember his, his name, but the, you know, him, you know, yeah, very nice and, and tense, the book underlines that the reason that he, you know, or, or underlines Bella realizing that the reason he is now dangerous is that there's not Cullens around to protect her, you know. Uh, let's see, what was the other thing? The Yeah, pretty cool seeing the, the fighting between vampire and werewolves. And, you know, you get that brief meaningful shot of one of the werewolves stopping and, and looking at, at Bella, and we later realize that was Jacob. Also, good job when there's multiple wolves of making... It, uh, I'm especially thinking of when two of them are fighting each other, making them just distinct enough looking that you can always tell which is which. And I like that when they're fighting, like, one of them accidentally knocks over the camera, which is, like, yeah, you know, if you don't like that kind of thing, blame saving Private Ryan. That's, we're stuck with it now. And... Let's see. It, but but yeah, you know, the the fight where they managed to take out the yeah, the vampire there. Um yeah, I like the scene where you know, she talks to some of the werewolves after they've 
you know, and, and one of the, the one that was like attacking her is like, sorry. And that was apparently also an, an ad lib. Um, and, and the thing with like, uh, she runs with vampires. Can't really run with vampires. And you know, the a Emily gets it right away. She chuckles and then Bella has to explain it to the others. Cause they're fast. And the, um, let's see, right in the, in the, on the commentary track, they joke that it sounds like Emily calls Bella muffin when she, you know, she's offering her a muffin. Um, I think that covers that. Yeah, um, the, um, that, yeah, we, we, then we have the, um, the bit where Bella, you know, jumps off the, you know, because they said, you know, it's, it's a real adrenaline rush, so she realizes that's how she's going to be able to see Edward again, and, you know, they do a really, I, I like that they intercut werewolves hunting Victoria with Bella jumping in. From what I recall, that is not in the book, you know, but this moment where, like, yeah, it's it's close to, you know, Vic Victoria almost gets Bella, but then Jacob gets to, you know, yeah. Um, let's see, and the, uh, let's see, then we have the, um, yeah, yeah, they, they, you know, they go home and and Jacob is worried you know he can tell there's a where of a vampire nearby and the yeah you know she realizes it has to be one of the the Cullens and Alice is like what smells like wet dog and she's like well maybe it's me hmm, maybe maybe it's Jacob and she's like werewolves are not safe to be around he's right behind me isn't he and the, you know, yeah, we get the whole, the, the misunderstanding with, you know, he answers the phone and the, you know, it's, it's Jacob on the other end of the line. You know, he thinks that Bella is dead, crushes the cell phone in his hand, which fun fact, that's actually how Robert Pattinson hangs up just like every time. And yeah. They have to to get to 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 Italy to to save and you know in the in the book we go through you know the the various plane trips. I'm really glad that they trimmed it down because there's not really anything there that needs to be in the movie. You know it it works. You know it it's milking the tension in the book. The movie would have been over long if they had tried to include it. And the, let's see, right, uh, when, when they get to the, to Voltari, the, it actually, the, the cops there were actual real Italian cops, you know, and they're like, you know, they, they, they understand, no, it's just a movie. So the, you know, they're not, you know, one could imagine they probably wouldn't be that happy about someone driving a car that fast near that many people. But, you know, they, they get that it's just a movie. Um, let's see. And, yeah. Uh, she manages to get to to Edward just in time, running through the the fountain. Maybe she still likes wearing wet clothing. You know, at, at this point, I think that is a very real possibility. Um, but, yeah. And, you know, briefly at first, Edward is thinking, like, you know, oh, I... I I died and went to heaven. I'm, I'm reunited with Bella. But, you know, because he really did think that she was dead. Um, let's see. And, right, and apparently, like, there's a, there's a little girl who spots uh, Edward as he walks into, you know. By the way, I, I really think they improved the, the diamond glinting effect as well. But, but yeah, you know, she spots the, the yeah, she spots him. And it's the th on, the, on the commentary track, they explain, you know, they felt like, well, someone has to see him. Why is everybody looking the other d direction? And, you know, there's not quite as much tension if nobody is about to see him. But if it's a little girl, you know, she can tell whoever she wants. Nobody's going to believe her. They're going to be like, oh, yeah, sure. You saw, a, a, you know, a man's skin, you know, 
glint in, in the sun. That's, that definitely happened. And the... Um, it's, it's... Yeah. Later on, we see a bunch of tourists being let in. And one of them is, like, a child. I'm not entirely certain if it's the same little girl. They do joke on the commentary track. You know, someone's, you know the Vulture is going to find her and kill her. But, yeah, that is also just really, you know, just devastating. Thinking about all these innocent people being killed and there's nothing the good guys can do about it um yeah i quite enjoyed seeing i want to say his name is daniel cudmore who also plays colossus uh, you know as as one of the yeah and and great fight between him and, and edward as well and yeah of when you know they're supposed to be like removing their hoods when they're walking down the the hall but in, on the commentary track they point out it kind of looks like they're just scratching their heads and like i didn't expect this it's, yeah um and let's see they get yeah uh really really glad that dakota fanning is part of this series just i've literally never been unhappy to see dakota fanning in in anything i'm, I'm so glad that she made it beyond being a child star there's a lot of child stars who are incredibly talented but they just can't quite make it as you know once once they grow up and yeah i'm i'm really really glad that she's still around i've seen her in in a bunch of movies over the years and she's just always so just amazing i, I love the little bit where she laughs at the or chuckles i guess suppresses a chuckle at the idea that edward isn't scared you know um let's see and the um, yeah uh also i was that cameron bright as one of the he, I, I think he's the one who like grabs bella by the shoulder to restrain her just yeah really really cool to to see also really glad that he's you know he continued acting after coming of age he was he was incredible as as a kid and you know, I've, I haven't seen that much since he came of age, but I can imagine he's he's still great. But you know, uh, butterfly effect. He's not. It's not his fault that Godsend sucks. He's in uh, X Men: The Last Stand. He's the kid who disables powers with his power. And uh, let's see. Yeah, you know, we we get to the the three head Vulturi. And, you know, get more of, of we, yeah, we get more of, of the performance as, as Arrow by the inimitable Michael Sheen. Many have tried, all have failed. You know, when this movie was, like, casting, funny story, actually what happened was the bat signal went on. And Michael Sheen, like, opened one of his eyes and was like, eh. And then the werewolf detector started wagging its tail and barking. Then he was like, you got it. You know, opened the lid of his coffin. Just, like, this guy really, really loved being in, like, early to mid-2000s vampire and werewolf movies. And I'm here for it. Like, he choose so much more scenery here than he did in underworld and just yeah i just i really love seeing him it's just such great and i've heard there's more great acting moments by him coming up in the the sequels to this but just yeah you know he's he's so he really loves that bella is able to resist their their powers um and i think that might be about yeah uh, I like the the detail about you know there is a human woman working there and you know there's that thing about you know oh she's she's hoping that they'll turn her and is it I think it might be Dakota Fanning who adds maybe she'll be dessert to, you know just yeah nice little you know that that is I, I think that works in in every movie I've seen where vampires and and humans now i can't stop saying it the nicholas cage way vampires and 
humans are working together, you know, and the, and the humans are, are hopeful that, you know, just some, some little detail about, oh, they'll, they'll kill you like nothing, you know. Um, I think that might, but yeah, yeah. So we get this thing of like, you know, if Bella became a vampire, the Volturi would be perfectly happy with, uh, you know, but yeah and and you know alice is like she's she's concerned i i saw it with my with my powers uh, you know i'll 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 turn her myself you know and edward's like um sis what is you know which it's just yeah sibling rivalry you know one moment you're bickering over who whose toy that is the next one of you is you know, turning your, your partner into one of the undead against your will. And, um, let's see. Yeah, you know, so they, they go home and she says, we got to put it to a vote. And I, I appreciate that we get the, you know, um, again, I, f I believe her name is Rosalie, but, you know, she's like, you know, I, I want to explain why I said no. You know, it's, I, I truly do... I, I wouldn't wish this upon anyone. I wish someone had said no for me, you know. Um, but yeah, and, and Al's like, yeah, oh, we're all, we're, we're sisters, you know. And and the, the, yeah, the older brother coded one, like just, yeah, just so re really, really fun. Um, yeah, and we end on the somewhat cliffhanger of, you know, there's the explanation that if, she is, if, if uh, Cullen bites Bella, even if she consents to it, that breaks the treaty and they're, yeah, they're going to kill, you know, her. Uh, and I, also the Cullens maybe, you know, just, yeah. Um, and we get just, you know, there's, there's almost a fight between Jacob and, and Edward and Bella points out, you can't hurt each other without hurting me. Um, right, in the commentary track, um, or maybe the, this was specifically for the, the French-named vampire, but they, they refer to the fighting stance as like a vampire high-five or something like that, which is pretty funny. It, it does kind of look like, it's, you know, setting up for a, for a high-five. No wonder that it doesn't, you know, they, they don't get along. You can't high-five a dog. You know, you can, you can shake its paw, but there's, yeah, just misunderstandings all around. Um, right, on the commentary track, they also point out that they didn't realize at first, but yeah, uh, when Jacob is begging Bella not to go to Italy, he is literally, <laughs> like, doing, like, a, a dog begging, you know, with the, the paws in front of it, just, yeah. Um, right, and they also mention loving, you know, Alice's reaction, you know, when, when Jacob sticks his head through the, the car door window, she like turns to 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 Bella is like, "What is he doing? And can you please make him stop?" Um, I th think this might be the whole thing. Uh, I feel like there's something else that I really wanted to say, but um. Maybe not. Yeah. Um, the, the, um, right, yeah, I, I just realized I haven't really talked about, I, I think the, the action works. I, I could always tell what's going on and, you know, there's enough emotional investment that it never feels like, like filler or something. And yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to the next one. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, it's going to be a little while, but I am looking forward to more of, of this franchise. And yeah, um, the, I, f I swear there was at least one more thing. Um, Poor Charlie. Um, like, 
in the first one, she disappears for a while, comes back in hospital, and now she's gone for three days. And, like, you know, and just... Yeah, the, the, um, you know, he even said, you know, she's like, ah, oh, you, you don't have to worry about me. Last time you said that, you were gone for three days, you know. And the, yeah, you know, she's like, I have a passport. I left a note, which, like, I, I mean, I get, yeah, I guess that is, it's, it's not nothing. <laughs> 